leg up in this uh, Little League World Series. Back here at Volunteers Stadium in Williamsport, Dave Fleming, David Ross. All right, let's focus on our first matchup of the day, Curacao and South Korea. South Korea is a team that, Rossi, every time they have been in Williamsport, they have been a championship contender. This year doesn't look any different. No, this is a great team. Uh, the most popular sport in South Korea is baseball, so these kids are fundamentally sound. You talk to their manager. They play great defense. They're going to press the envelope on the bases. They love to play baseball. You'll see fundamental baseball here today. I'm excited to see this matchup. So power, size, strength. Meanwhile, for Curacao, a, a really impressive all-around performance in their opener. Yeah, for sure. You get a four-inning no-hitter. you got Curly Martha going deep, just flashing the leather. And oh yeah, their best pitcher is on the bump today. Jerdrick Pro Profar is the guy they say is their best pitcher. So should be another great performance <laughs> to see here on the mound for uh, Pure South. So they pitched a no-hitter, and now their best guy goes today. <laughs> well, I don't get it. It's not a big place, Curacao. They have produced so much baseball talent. Let's meet the kids. It's a very talented team. It is good to know that Jerdrick picked his older brother as his favorite player. <laughs> that better. makes me happy. <laughs> you, you better. You're going to get beat up when you get home. The third uh, Profar brother to play here in Williamsport. A huge task, though, for Curacao. Suho Yang and South Korea, the team that they will face. Yeah, he, this is their command guy. Good fastball. Suho likes to throw strikes. Down and away, you'll see them stay a lot out a lot on the outer half of the zone. Love a good command pitcher. This is one of their guys. I mean, we are really excited to see this game because both these teams look just so good in their opening round wins. So power against power, and right away, Jurdrick Profar leads off for Curacao. The first pitch of this game on the inside corner for a called strike. The equivalent of a 91 mile an hour big league fastball right out of the chute. Right out of the chute. Just a bit, took the words right out of my mouth. 70 miles an hour. That's bringing it here this morning. Oh. This is a little bit high there. We will give you the MLB pitch equivalents for every pitch here at Little League that is 70 miles an hour or faster. Stood out to me that Cure South Group took batting practice at 7 a.m. this morning knowing runs and, bat and hitting are going to be a premium today. So when we show you those equivalents, it's in terms of reaction time for the hitter. A 70-mile-an-hour fastball here equals a 91-mile-an-hour at the big league level and upwards from there. And that fastball comes high and tight, so the count is 3-1 and one to start this game. Dave, we've talked about it. I mean, Sun Ho's a great command guy, but can't Suho can't really get those nerves under control so far this morning. That is a big challenge on the big stage. Yeah, that was perfect pitch, three and two. Yeah, these kids got their first Little League World Series experience, but for many of the pitchers who will throw today, this will be their first time pitching in this tournament. That's high ball four. So Jujic Profar starts this game by drawing a leadoff walk. And that's a good thing for Curacao when anybody is on base for the next kid who will come up the shortstop curly martha who has impressed everybody already he is a stud i mean you watch him take infield i was super impressed and you gave me the scouting report but it is all true so far from what i've seen well, he got the call on the inside corner curly with a little smile there jason corbett is our home plate umpire he's wearing the microphone jason from uh, roanoke virginia so we'll hear his voice all game long that one is off the fist to short. They get the force out there for out number one. Nice clean play there by Miwook at shortstop. Gets around it nice, fielding it cleanly. I'm really excited about the defense we're going to see today. This team is known for their speed and defense. They're going to play small ball. The South Korean team we talked about in the open, fundamentally sound. They're going to rely on their bunting. Don't see that too much in baseball lately. Shendrian Martinez takes strike one. Well, Martinez is the guy who pitched the no-hitter in Curacao's opening round win. Gonna have a chance to maybe meet his favorite player. I hope he does. Javi Baez today, it's a popular name around here. Wait, wait, does Javi have any idea when he shows up here how popular he's gonna be? I texted him last night, I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope he's ready. It's going to be crazy. 
I do believe he will be Mr. Popular today oh. among many big leaguers who are going to be popular. And if you're just joining us and you've never seen this day before, we've got great Little League World Series baseball for you. But as we speak, the Pirates and the Cubs are making their way to Williamsport. Oh. That one high and tight. Yikes. And Martinez did a good job of getting out of the way. Mean Ho, their manager, said this is a good man guy. Hadn't really found it quite yet early on this morning for Suho. Just struggling with that up and in fastball. Ball's running hard. Here we go. Oh, he did. So that's a swing. And Martinez strikes out. All right, so we took a poll of every Little Leaguer who is here, who are the favorite MLB players, and uh, the resounding winner is none other than Javi Baez. And is it a coincidence that he's going to be here this year? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for him and these kids to get to meet what a special human being he is. All right, first with two outs. And a strike to Nathan Castillo, the right fielder. It really is much watch baseball when he's on the field. We've got so many great young players. Javi's in that mix, but there's a lot of good, exciting players. That list is going to continue to grow. One ball, one strike to count. Saw a couple of Vladdy Juniors yeah. last night. Yep. We've, we've even seen some Fernando Tatis Juniors. So the kids here are in tune with all the young talent in the big leagues. And I think our game is really, Major League Baseball has done a great job of promoting the good young players, getting them out there with social media today. Pete Alonzo we saw last night. So the Pirates of the Cubs will be here today on the grounds at this Little League complex to meet these kids, to watch some of the games before they head across town to get ready for the Little League Classic tonight, an actual real big league game here in Williamsport on Sunday Night Baseball. But this is the game that gets the day started. Two outs here in the top of the first. And a 2-2 pitch. Good swing by Nathan Castillo. You know, it could be, Rossi, that the hitters also are going to need a turn through the lineup to get adjusted to some big-time velocity on the mound. Yeah, that's his big-time velocity. You're right. When he is commanding that fastball, it is electric. 2-2. Two -two. Got him. I know they took early batting practice. It's hard to simulate that. No score after a half inning in Williamsport. Well, this is the first South Korean team to come to Williamsport not from the giant capital city of Seoul. This team is from Chungcheong, South Korea. It is still a big city. It's a beautiful place. Well, it's a group from South Korea that more and more has role models from their own country in big league baseball, including some of the big stars of the year, Unjin Ryu, a guy that a lot of those kids look up to. And the pitcher that they will face, meet the players, brought to you by Chick-fil-A, is Jerdrick Profar as he goes to work here against South Korea. Jerdrick, who is the third Profar brother to play here in Williamsport, only the second time a family has sent three different siblings here to play in the Little League World Series. And his first strike in Williamsport is one and one. I'd like to see the baseball IQ of mom and dad. They're doing a pretty good job raising some baseball players there in Curacao. Great, great family. Oh. And he's got a great example in his brothers. One of the minor leagues, one of the big leagues. Pretty pretty impressive. It's got to be nice to be on this stage, to follow in the footsteps of your brothers and be back on this Williamsport field. Jerickson playing for the Oakland A's. Jeremy is uh, on the cusp. He's in AAA. A hard hit ball into left field by Jinwon Na, who was the hitting star for South Korea in their opening round win. And man, can he swing it. Man, that's a nice swing right there. Flat bat, two for four with five RBIs in game one with a three-run home run. Nice job swinging the bat, just short stroke. Your typical out of the box. Left side swing, that's a pretty piece of hitting there. Always looks so nice when a left-handed hitter goes the other way. Right-handers doesn't look as pretty, but left-handers go the other way, beautiful. Well, I, I we have a little timeout situation it could be that DeShandro Trump, who, making a dive to try to go after that ball, might have jammed his arm, scraped up his arm. Hopefully he's okay. So they're checking on, checking on uh, DeShandro. And they are going to ask the uh, trainer to come out and just help him make sure everything's all right. Yeah, tough little, little dive, first play of the game. 
hitting the ground. Looks like he landed on it a little funny. Let's take a look. Oh, catching all that weight. Yeah. Oh, definitely awkward. They dive all that weight on that left side. Well, you hope that some young bones, some young lig ligaments, everything's all right. He, he seems like he's doing pretty well with those uh, sort of stress tests, strength tests. Yeah, they do those st stress tests when you go into spring training as a player, and you're like, wait a minute, my arm's tired from just pushing you down. <laughs> <laughs> now i got to go play baseball. <laughs> just got to make sure everything's structurally okay in there. He does not want to come out of the game. Oh, no. All right. Good news. So after a leadoff single, DeShandro will stay in the game. Lots of the other players on the teams that aren't playing today aren't getting ready for a game. That's Team Canada. And in the front row, Team Italy here watching some baseball and getting ready to meet oh. some big leaguers too. A lot of them, in fact. I think everybody's up early, got the breakfast in them, and waiting on those big league buses to roll in. And the Pirates are not far from landing. Pirates are on their way. The Cubs will land after the Pirates. Both teams will head over here. Bean Yoon showing a bunt. Nope. The throw, and he is out. So Jinwon Na, kind of a delayed steal, and Gendrian Martinez, who pitched a no-hitter, maybe his best throw of the whole Little League World Series. Well, he only threw 37 pitches in game one for that no-hitter, and you look at there, just caught in the middle, thought he was going to get the bunt down, no man's land, nice throw from Martinez from behind the plate. That is a cannon. And by the way, can we show Javi Baez that tag from Curly Martha? <laughs> Curly Martha's legit. I, that was a, a Javi Baez-like tag. Oh. That was just a terrific, subtle play. We all marvel at uh, Javi and his ability to do this. Watch how quick this was. Wow. That is a skill. Nice throw, nice catch, tag. This Curacao team's got some skills. Now what do we got? Checking on the count, maybe? Maybe if he went, yeah, on that first pitch. What, it, what exactly is the count? A lot going on on that first at bun attempt, whether he went at it or not. Bean Hyun, the catcher for South Korea, hits one right back to Jurdrick Profar. Out number two. It's another something we've seen in this Little League so far, the pitchers that feel their position do a really good job of, you know, getting going deep in the games. These guys can really feel their position. Balls back at them a lot. No balls getting up the middle here on Jerdrick. It's a big boy right there on the center of the diamond. Makes that look really easy, but saves him a lot of pitches and a lot of base hits. The guy that you've already been talking about who's wearing the catcher's gear here today, Shendry and Martinez, it was almost like he was trying to get <laughs> the Australian team to hit it back to him. He made one play after another. Let's play Pepper. It, it, it's, it's exactly what it was like. Day one on the U.S. side over there was the same thing. A lot of balls back to the pitchers, them feeling their positions Run. well. Meanwhile, Park is the hitter now with two down and nobody on. So Jinwon Na, the leadoff hitter, he's the Korean Eagle. That's his nickname. Oh, that no. one got Meanwook. That one hurt. That hurt bad. I would guess that he has never been hit by a pitch like that before. Jerdrick on his way over to check on him. Yeah. Well, it looks like he's all right. That's a tough little dude. Man, that's a, I don't know how hard that was, but that was like a two-seamer just chased him in right in the center of the back. This is ball. This this hurts here. Oh, man. That's 90, a 74-mile-an-hour pitch, which is equivalent of 96 in the big leagues. 
square between the shoulder blades. So it's a two out base runner, and we're glad that Mimook Park, who calls himself the Little Eagle, glad he's okay. Who's going to take this one? It'll be the first baseman. That's Clay Winkler for the catch and out number three. So one inning in the books. We've got so much more baseball still to come from Williamsport. Nothing, nothing, Curacao, South Korea. Curacao, best of luck in the Lily World Series. I understand that Curacao, first of all, congrats. Happy about you guys. Happy for y'all. One more time in the Williamsport. Um, let's go get it. Congratulations on, on winning the, the Caribbean tournament. Now it's time for the for the fun part, the, the World Series. I know you guys will bring the championship home because I, I watch a lot of games and you guys have a lot of talents. Good luck. Uh, how great is that? I guarantee you those guys are watching right now. It is a country that is so proud of its baseball tradition. And not just current players, although a lot of current stars like Kenley Jansen and Profar and Jonathan Scope and Ozzie Albies, but Andrew Jones, Randall Simon, Bam Bam Mullins, for a tiny place. And the population of the island is, what, 200,000, something like that? And they just produce big leaguer after big leaguer. Didi Gregorius is yep. a native of uh, Curacao. I love how proud they are of their country and their own baseball tradition. Yeah, you, you talk to these guys. Anderton Simmons, one of my former teammates, is a stud from over there. I mean, these guys are fundamentally sound and super talented. The hand-eye coordination, the middle infield group from there is always strong. You're talking, you, that, that list you're talking about, great baseball in Curacao. Clay Winkler for Curacao. And he takes a ball. It's one and one. Clay, who had some real nice swings in their opening round win. His dream job, aside from being a big leaguer, is a military physician. It's a unique kind of dream job. I, I would say. Must have some military background in the family. One and two. Got him swinging with a good fastball. Suho Yang is throwing the ball hard and well at the start of this one. I mean, it's almost like an invisible. This fastball explodes middle of the plate. Cure style hitters do not know what to do with it. It just seems to climb up on you. These hitters are super tardy. Hides the ball well with that front side. Here comes four-seamer middle. So one out here in the top of the second. Scoreless Curacao and South Korea. And DeShandro Trump bunts. Suho makes the play himself and throws out the third baseman. Two down. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. I think it's going to be tough as much as the South Korean team likes to bunt. And they're fundamentally sound. I'm sure they're going to be well versed in the defense of how to field the bunt. And you saw... Suho Yang bounce on that really easy. Not the greatest bunt, but very well defended. So now Kevin Rosina, the left fielder, and the seventh place hitter for Curacao. Oh. He takes a ball. You and I noticed the same thing. South Korea, we're so used to seeing them come here and just bludgeon the ball. Power, power, power. And yet all of their coaches this year with this team say, look, we're going to play a little more small ball than usual. Well, that might be a product of being outside the big city of Seoul where you've got to be fundamentally sound to compete with all the group that's coming from the big city. This team does it by pitching and defense and playing small ball, as the coach says. Could be. It's the first team not from Seoul to represent a baseball-crazy country here in Williamsport. South Chungcheong, kind of in the middle of the country. I've never been to South Korea, but people say that Seoul is the huge cosmopolitan cultural center and Chungcheong, which is a big city in its own right, but there are national parks around. There's all kinds of natural beauty. It's a more agrarian area of the country. All right, no more big words. No more okay, that's, that's <laughs> right. That's it. Not before, not before I eat my lunch. Let's go. They farm Agrarian, a lot of now things. I'm like, oh gosh. They grow okay. things. Okay. How about that? All right. All right. Three and two. Oh. Ball four. <laughs> uh, he perambulates down to first base. 
Oh, no. Oh, boy. I'm going to need another cup of coffee. <laughs> Uh, so, a walk and a base runner, the second for Curacao, Zion Pardo. The second baseman, one of the littlest kids here in Williamsport, but he will stick his nose in there. I love this kid. He told us all about his home run hitting coming into the eye. I hit all these grand slams. The first pitch he saw in Williamsport was a bunt. <laughs> <laughs> He's just setting him up. Take. Setting up everybody on TV to look for the home run. He's going to sneak attack him with the ball. I loved watching him take infield. He is smooth over at second base. So here's the 1-1. One -one. It's called strike two. Bien Hume behind the plate just sticking these fastballs. I love watching the Asian catchers. They drop that left knee a lot and able to stick that ball out in front. Oh. The catching here overall is so impressive to me at this age. It really is. And to, to me, too, being a catcher and thinking about when I was 11 and 12 years old, I had no idea what I was doing compared to these kids. 74 mile an hour fastball for the fourth strikeout already for Suho Yang. No score, middle of the second. This kid's bringing it. He is bringing it, just disappearing fastball. Here it comes, boys. Even though the uh, U.S. game up at Lomity won't start for a good long while here at Volunteer. We got some spots. You saw some folks up on the hill in this ballpark, which is just as beautiful. Home of the international bracket in the early rounds. Bottom of the second, no score. Curacao and South Korea. Dave Fleming, David Ross. Great to have you with us on this beautiful morning. The fog has burned off. Perfect day here in Williamsport. We even saw... we were. Coming in at 7 a.m. this morning, we saw people lining up, posting up the chairs up there on the hill. There were, a, there were a lot of them up there. It was crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait a minute, we're not even here yet. <laughs> like, they didn't start over there until 11. Four hours ahead of the first U.S. game up at Lomity, there were people, lots of people setting up. Ooh, that's nasty. Yeah, you got to get geared up for all the velocity, and then there's that. See Yong Lee, the third baseman, leading off for South Korea here in the bottom of the second. Oh. Sometimes with the nicknames and the questions we ask the kids, there's a little element of lost in translation. I would love to ask See Young because he told us his nickname is My Baby. <laughs> I, I, I just would like to be able to ask him to clarify a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to need to know the background on that one. He had a good cut there, and it's still two and two. That's a nice approach there against Jerdrick. When you got that fastball up, fouling it off late, that's where that breaking ball is going to start. It's going to be a strike. Some smart hitters. See, Young can hit, and he can cook. He hits a little soft liner out to short. And that's no problem for Curly Martha. So we saw some of the folks. Wow. Wow. So wow. That, the, 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 the first game up the hill doesn't start for another hour and a half. And that's the scene already. Basically every spot on the lower hill is taken and the stands are starting to fill up. And we, I know one week from today we will crown a champion at the Little League World Series. And that's obviously a huge day. But the way that this has evolved over the last few years, the, the, the Little League Big League Day, the day of the Little League Classic across town, might be right up there with Championship Day as the day that the folks around here look forward to the most. I think so. It, it's They come around here, you're getting superstar big leaguers roaming the grounds here, just walking around, mixing and mingling with the players, with the fans, signing autographs that really is feels like an off day when they're here for them and then oh yeah and they got to go to work tonight but when they're here they've been all in the last two years oh and two to the pitcher suho yang against jerdrick profar he chased that one in the dirt martinez picks it up very nicely cleared a little lane and threw him out that's a nice job of blocking by martinez from behind the plate this breaking ball from profar is nasty and he keeps this thing in front good job keeping in front getting back composing himself 
gets on the outside here. First baseman does a nice job of giving him a lane. Pitch and catch right there. That's a nice play. That's what you always told Lester and those guys, right? Trust me, I'll block it. You want to throw one in the dirt, I, I got your back. It means a lot when you've got a catcher that you trust back there, especially here at the Little League World Series, and to get to this level, you can't have a catcher that doesn't block the ball. They have to not let these balls get by them. Ooh. Power against power and a big swing, a pop-up with the bright sun, and it's going to fall. A dash for second, good throw, tag safe. Very close. Gbiom Young, the left fielder, hustles that pop-up into a double. Nathan Castillo is playing really deep and right, almost up against the warning track. Coach has got him way back there. Tough for Zion to go back that far with the sun, but he throws a nice strike here and a quick tag there by Martha at second ba at shortstop, but just sliding in and safe. I think just ahead. Good call. Yeah, nice slide. Good hustle. That's a signature of this South Korean group. They're going to push the envelope on the base path. Well, and I don't blame the outfielders with that kid at the plate for playing right. deep. <laughs> right. I'd be deep, too. Songju Lim will be a pinch hitter here. So the kid they call the Koala with a chance to put South Korea ahead. He bats left-handed. Takes one just off the outside. 73 mile an hour fastball. When you see that MLB equivalent, that's the equivalent reaction time the hitter has. Of course, the mound is closer here at Little League than it is in the big leagues. Oh. Ooh. Another good looking pitch, call the ball. If you missed our open, we had an interview with the Jurdrick Profar, and he told Sebastian the thing he was most looking forward to tonight watching the mechanics I, of the big leaguers. That stood out to me as well. That was a well thought out answer and he just it just came to him thinking, man, I just can't wait to see these guys so up close and personal and watch how they feel ground balls, watch how they hit, watch what their mannerisms are. That's when you know kids are locked in, watching the mannerisms of big leaguers and trying to emulate their favorite players. Two and one. Oh. And that's ball three. And he probably gets to do it a lot more than most. I mean, he, he's a guy that is around, obviously, his brothers, minor leaguers and big leaguers, and, and probably goes to a lot of big league games. He gets to do that a lot, and the fact that he's paying attention to the others, that means this kid's continue to develop. Yeah, and he has had a chance to travel to the United States and see his brother play, but not, you know, Curacao is a, it's a long trip. He goes to school, he lives in Curacao, so he's been and maybe seen like 15 big league games, something like that. 3-1 pitch, and that's ball four. So a two-out walk, and uh, South Korea's got two on base for the first time in this game. And Jerdrick, I, he might have been a little frustrated. Those first couple pitches that were not called strikes, it looked pretty good. Let's see if he can uh, kind of refocus here. Kim Jun Min will be a second consecutive pinch hitter. And we are going to get a visit to the mound. Come here, come here, come here. focus. Boom. Thank you, focus. Oh, South Ting. Shen, do up here on the cubo. Get the focus. Concentrate. Tire the bumiyo bala nang ang worki. Boom. Get the focus. No kita bu focus. Get the focus. Concentrate. Boom. Pinche, pinche, pinche dreta. Boom. Saka bala, saka bala. Guerra bala tranquilo tira primero sa kaos bami. Bo tire, abo tire bo tapis sa kaos. Si tiri bo. You want to buy it? Buy it first. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Michelangelo Celestina, the manager of this team from Curacao. He don't need a lot of translation to figure out what he was saying. Right. Focus. Concentrate. You know, you lose your concentration here. One little thing goes wrong. Or you get up, give up a, a base hit, and the man gets on second. You don't lock it in. That's the name of the game. Just focus and concentrate. So Min pinch hitting. Yu is a special pinch runner over at first base and a breaking ball bounced in the dirt. The throw behind the runner. He picked him Whoa. off. What a throw and what a tag. What a tag. Curly Martha sliding in with this tag. Nice block here by Shindrone. Getting up, seeing the runner get off. 
and Curly Martha. What a tag with the body control. Wow. Javi Baez, he's got to see this. Stop kid. it. Hey, drop third strike. We've got to finish the play. And as a catcher, we got to make sure we're telling our first baseman which side you want it, inside or outside. You guys ready? Here you go. So it's early. Outside, outside. Good. Outside, outside. First baseman gets on that side of the bag. That's perfect. Clear yourself that base runner. It makes the throw a little bit easier. Now out front. Good. Give me both hands, too, to go down and do it. Bare hand scoops that ball into the glove. Clear yourself of the base runner. It's a strikeout, but we got to finish it off at first base. Kyle Peterson's got it down. That's exactly right. Outside, outside, you hear him there. Great throwing lane at first base. You see here, he gets in the throwing lane, doesn't have to fool with the hitter, batter runner, really easy. And then this throw down to second, this is when he shows off the cannon. Nice block, picks up the base runner, and then just a phenomenal strike and a tag from Curly Martha. What a great play. Now your pitcher's struggling a little bit. You're in your first jam of the game, and then you make a defensive play like that. Shendrian Martinez, what a terrific inning for him defensively. And Curly Martha with a tag that would make Javi Baez proud. Yes, it would. We're going to get to see that. I mean, I've been really impressed with Curly Martha, but Shendrian Martinez has done a phenomenal job, obviously the no-hitter, but going back behind the plate, blocking the skill set, the athleticism, this gets for real, too. Now Curacao will come up in the third inning of a scoreless game, and we figured that even with all the offensive talent on both sides, the pitching is just so strong. You get so many powerful arms that offense was going to be hard to come by in this game. So we are just getting started here from Williamsport, turning into a gorgeous morning at 11 a.m. Eastern right here on ESPN, following us, Minnesota and Virginia on the U.S. side, part of the winner's bracket all the way through on this first Sunday. And then uh, at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern, Mexico and Japan, 2 Eastern on ABC, New Jersey and Hawaii, and 7 Eastern on ESPN. The Little League Classic, it all finishes tonight over across town at uh, Bowman Field. The Cubs and the Pirates, the Pirates are maybe a half hour away from touching down, so soon they will be here. Maybe b before this game ends, we'll see some Pirates players start to show up at the complex. So here we go, third inning. Nothing, nothing. Nope. No, he pulled him back. Good idea by uh, Zion. Trying to get something going here early on with the drag bunt. Seeing a pitch, taking a pitch there. Suho Yang has really been filling up the strike zone and really been in command here early on in this game. He's 4'9", he's 11 years old, and he can swing it. <laughs> I mean, this is a kid. I, I, they have great baseball in Curacao, but I don't care how good the baseball is. He had not faced many pitchers throwing like this. No, yeah, it, it, it is what separates you when you get here to the Little League World Series. The talent on the mound is just you haven't seen it up to this point. One, two. And that one called the ball. We have a fairly small strike zone going right now. And that's what Jurdrick Profar was, I think, a little frustrated by in the bottom of the second. 2-2. Two -two. That's called strike three. Of course, when the kid at the plate is 4-9, it's a small strike zone no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> you think I Zion versus the guy who's making that name really famous <laughs> uh, That's they're a big only difference. they're only eight years different. It's a, the age difference isn't that big, but they're 200 pounds separating the two of them. Yeah, I would hate one to land on the other. You know, that would not be good. I Zion has one more win at the Little League World Series than Zion wins. There you so. go. There you go. <laughs> uh, we got two Zions on this uh, Curacao team. Little did they know what the, that name was going to mean across the world. Mom and dad gave him the name. A lot of the kids here, I've heard it, Zion's name a couple times as their favorite athlete so far. He's making an impact from the high school level and then the college level really fast. I mean, he's only seven years older, Zion Williamson is, than some that's, of the kids who are playing here. Well, that's scary, and that's kind of, we've got Jerdrick Profar, and you think about both of his brothers 
at the Little League World Series not very long ago, and now one's in the big leagues. I think that just tells you how close these kids are to being professional athletes. It's not that far away. I know it seems like they're super young and innocent here, but before you know it, we'll see a lot of big league stars. Jurdrick takes a strike. He thought it was ball four. Come back to the batter's box. Full count three and two. Well, Jason Corbett might not be Jurdrick's favorite person in the world right now. He took a big swing there. Skies one down the right field line into foul territory. GB Ong Young makes the catch. So that is out number two. Looking for training videos for coaches and umpires. Some of them might even include Kyle Peterson. We don't know. Get free backyard tips, practice plans, drills, videos, and more. Visit LittleLeagueUniversity.org today. It's impressive, KP, breaking down the catch, and he knows it all. Well-rounded for former pitcher Kyle Peterson. Here's Curly Martha, his second look at this pitcher, and Curly hit one right back to my partner. Good catch. Now it helps. It helps when it rolls up the net, but still, that was good. Good grab by you. You still got it. Surprised me a little bit, and I didn't break the sign. <laughs> oh. He almost hit another one to us, didn't he? They say when you're on pitches, you foul them straight back. Curly Martha's all over these fastballs. The, Just finally getting his timing down. His first at bat. All right. <laughs> oh, and the stare he down still too. Got it. Oh, he still got it. Curly Martha hit that one down the left field line. Foul ball. Still got it. Wait till we show your old teammates that. <laughs> you think Lester's going to be impressed? They will not. Uh, yeah, we knew it was coming, and yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked. I came from nowhere. Uh, I, I didn't even think. Over at, over at Lavity, I don't think we can get it right up the net, so it just shocked me. That one popped up behind home plate, and... Not quite playable. It hits the net. We've got a baseball to play with. Well, while we celebrate your athletic prowess, <laughs> we have celebrated this kid at the plate, and I think you're right. He looks, his first at bat, he got a little jammed. He got that high-velocity fastball in on his hands. Now he's seen Suho Yang. He looks the part. He's, he, he's got it. Like, if we're talking about that thing, he's fouling balls off. He's got the hands. He's ready to hit. Eye hand coordinations there. We've seen what he could do on defense, watching him take infield. It's the best athlete I've seen at the Little League World Series so far. Well, the coaches for Curacao said since Jurex and Profar, this is our most talented Little Leaguer. And this time, though, he could not hold up a great fastball. Got Curly Martha to chase for the sixth strikeout of the first three innings. Middle of the third. Nothing, nothing. Well, you got all kinds of big league gear here ready for the Little League Classic, which comes up as the nightcap 7 Eastern right here on ESPN. Everything today here on ESPN other than the final U.S. game, the final Little League game, 2 Eastern on ABC, up the hill at Lomedy. So two U.S. games, two international games, plus a real, actual big league game in Williamsport on this great day for baseball. It is a gorgeous morning. And Curacao and South Korea are going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, scoreless in the bottom of the third. A first pitch swing and a pop-up. And Jurdrick wants to take it himself, and he will for out number one. And I'm heading over to Bowman Field to pick me up one of those shirts. I get one every year. Yeah. The memorabilia from that Little League class is pretty cool. I get a shirt every year, me and my son. Now, what's your strategy? Is it, 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 is it crowded? Do you have to go early? Do you wait till the game starts? Do you? I'm kind of the diva that goes, hey, can yeah. you pick me up a shirt? <laughs> oh, I forgot. I, uh, yeah. Don't see my big stand in line guy, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot oh, who I was dealing yep, with. You yeah, you totally forgot. Uh -huh. Diva. Uh, <laughs> here's oh. the best hitter for South Korea, and he gets hit by a breaking ball. So, Jin Wan Na, who singled to lead off the game, will take first base here. And I'm not saying that uh, Jurjik Profar is trying to do that, but I do think that every pitcher who faces this kid from here on out in Williamsport is going to try to say, I don't want that guy to beat me. Yeah, and, and sometimes you try harder, right, when the best hitter's in the box. Linya, yeah, Linya, the first at bat there from Jinwon and 
that base hit. You try to hold on to that breaking ball a little bit tighter, make it a little bit sharper, and that's what happened there to Profar. So here's Dean Hugh, and he bunts, and it's a good bunt. Profar will take it himself, and he throws it by the first baseman. Jinwon Na is going to come to third and get the stop sign there. They'll throw behind second. So that bunt turns into a scoring opportunity for South Korea. Second and third, only one out. I think DeShondro Trump had a chance at this at third, but Profar bounces off, good arm, and throws. Just doesn't get a good grip, and it sails on him a little bit. When you can't move your feet, your arm is a little bit slower, and the arm angle drops, and you get that run, that arm side run that kind of takes off there into the runner on that throw. So now Minwook Park, who got drilled by a pitch his first time up. Second and third, only one out. A great chance here for South Korea to take the lead. And a strike on the outside corner, 0-1. Infield in here, you can tell they're tight. Expecting something, probably going to come home if they get a ball, bringing the outfield in. Curly Martha talking to the outfielders, bringing them in. That one hit on the ground, a diving stab by Winkler. He's going to flip to first, and the ball not handled. One run is in. Profar will throw to third, and they've got the runner hung up in between home and third. And after the rundown executed nicely, they will tag out the runner for out number two, but one run is in. It's one nothing, and hopefully Clay Winkler is okay. Great play by Clay Winkler, first base here. Trying to hop up, going to make the play at home. Doesn't have time. Nice flip. Just really can't pick it up from Zion. And then this is what's very impressive. A rundown at the Little League level is much tougher than this Curacao group just made it look. Nice stretched out play. No play at home. He sees that. Goes for the flip there to Zion. And just hits him in the face a little bit. Hopefully he's all right. I don't know if an ankle got twisted or a knee, something like that, for Clay, the first baseman. They're looking at his right leg. This is a tough guy game this morning, isn't it? Man. A run is in. The batter, Minwoo Park, who hit that ball that was such a great play by Clay Winkler to keep it from being a hit that would have scored a couple of runs. He ends up at second base. I've been impressed with the, just the skills of this defense for this both teams, really. But Curacao right there, great diving stop, especially being in on the grass there. Tries to flip it there to Zion. is just too close. But look, he's stretched out, laid out. He picks his head up, looking. Beautiful play. Oh, yeah. he's not good. Yeah, that's he's definitely hurting. Yikes. Well, he's one of their best players. That's he, a big loss if he you, can't play. You always wonder whether it's just a pure pain issue or an actual injury. That, that looks like everything's not right. He doesn't even want to put weight on it. I think they're going to have to take him out of the game. Now that's too bad. I mean, that was a really great play. And hopefully if they get either some ice or some treatment or whatever, it turns out to not be a serious injury because we certainly don't want that to be the last. He's putting a little weight on it there. Maybe yeah. that's a good sign. Starting to put a little bit, yeah. We don't want that to be his last uh, moment no. on the field in Williamsport. So now, Lendrick Coffey will come in, a lefty first baseman, to play at first in place of Clay Winkler. Runner at second, two down. Wong Yu Son, the first baseman, will play face uh, Jurdrick Profar here. South Korea has scored.
I was impressed with how they executed that rundown. A lot of throws and some tight traffic there. That's much tougher to do than it looked like at this age. Totally agree. If a big league team doesn't execute that properly, then you right. say you, you got to Tighten that up a little bit at this I, level. I coach 10, 11 year olds, and it it is not that easy. They were throwing the ball all over the field, hitting guys in the chest, making nice running throws. 0 oh, 2 here to Sun. And a breaking ball called a ball. Jurdrick thought that was strike three. Well, the thing about Little League Baseball is the bases are 60 feet apart. If you make one little mistake, that you, you that costs you. You yep. don't have time to make up for it. Got him swinging a ball in the dirt. And the throw is going to go right to first base for out number three. So, a run for South Korea. Curacao's got to get the bats going. They trail 1-0. South Korea is taking him out of the game and bringing on uh, their leadoff hitter and their best hitter, Jinwon Na, to pitch here in the fourth. What can't Mr. Na do, <laughs> right? I mean, he rakes homers, and now he's going to try to hold this Curacao team down for the rest of this game. He's got his work cut out for him, but phenomenal job by Suho Yang. Yeah, tremendous. First three innings of this game. You know, one thing about Jinwon is... He had a hard time. He pitched in the opener, and he had a hard time at least initially throwing strikes. We'll see. Get strike one there. Foul tip got a piece of his catcher. He definitely throws hard. He's a lefty. He can do it all. He looks like that. He's a great soccer player, too, apparently. Big breaking ball. Nice sweeping left-handed breaking ball. He, big presence on the mound. He didn't look that big in the box. Gets on that bump out there. Nice big kid. Great shot right there. So it's one and one to the catcher, Shendrian Martinez. One and two. A totally different look for this pitcher. Maybe that's part of the strategy, too. I'm thinking so. This is... Coming from the left side, a lot of movement, a lot of depth to those breaking pitches. That one is hammered deep down the left field line, but it's hooking foul. Wow. Not far away from being a game-tying home run, just a foul ball. Just about to say, what can't Shindra Martinez do? <laughs> He's been doing it all as well. This is amazing. One, two. Oh. Bean Yoon tried to frame that one for the umpire. I like the getting out there, the guy standing on the plate. They were talking about how close Shindron is to the plate. Yeah, he is right on the line. Pulls that one foul. It takes guts at this age. You got these kids throwing as hard as they do to stand right on top of the plate. And we see it on each team. There's a lot of kids that are up on that plate in that batter's box. They got it. They're tough, as we've talked about already, but fearless. So it's two and two with the new pitcher, Jinwon Na. And he got him swinging with the fastball. Just a few feet away from a home run to tie the game, but it ends up with the strikeout. That fastball up off that breaking ball, that's the tough one to lay off of. Same tunnel that that breaking ball was coming out of that he took a great swing on and just hit foul. That fastball up and away from a left-hander, tough to lay off of. Looks like good hitting. So Suho Yang goes out and plays right field. 52 pitches. He would be eligible to take the mound again for South Korea as early as Wednesday. The winners of today's games play again on Wednesday. Wednesday. So Suho now would be available if South Korea can win this game to pitch once again. First pitch and a foul off the bat of Nathan Castillo. And how important is that? 11 straight game two winners and 16 of the last 17 have went on to, to be in the championship game. So, yeah, this is a big, big, big win here. We talk about the importance of game one. 
but it holds up. If you win those first two, you're in the uh, captain's seat, yeah. so to speak, in your bracket. Winning team plays on Wednesday. All of our games today. Ooh, that's nasty. Two strike breaking ball got him. Well, we talked about the four seamer up and away. When you bring the breaking ball off that and you get a swing, it's gonna be tough if it stays outside. That is just nasty right there. Backdoor breaking ball, Jin Wan Na starts it off the plate. Missed that by a couple feet. That was filthy. So this was the spot for Clay Winkler. He had to leave the game with some kind of knee injury, making a great diving play. So Lendrick Coffey will take his first at bat of the day. Left-handed thrower, left-handed hitter. Right there, one and one. You know, just in case you wanted to feel a little deficient about your own talents, <laughs> Lendrick speaks five languages. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe he learned some new stuff watching Netflix. Dutch, English, French, Spanish, oh. Papamiento. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely I can barely speak English. <laughs> Nobody it seems to be disputing that. No, Here's the swing and a miss for strike three. Punching out the side. Yikes, what an announcement on the mound for Jin Won Na. one nothing South Korea. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the 2019 Little League World Series. We have changed venues. We're here at the Williamsport Regional Airport, which uh, surely must be the smallest airport that either the Pirates or the Cubs will fly into this year. They were telling me they do about 15 to 20 flights a day, but they've been very, very busy this morning. Our colleague Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez arrived. That certainly raised some eyebrows. I saw some folks with some black and yellow. I said, oh, you're here for the Buccos game tonight, right? They said, no, no. We're here for the game today. Turns out it was Noah Culpepper of the team from Northern Virginia's grandparents. So a lot of action here at the airport this morning. Here's the plan, right? The Pirates are about to land at any minute. Uh, the Cubs will come in at around noon. Now, when these teams arrive, they'll go straight from their airplane to a bus. But that bus won't be empty. It'll be full of Little Leaguers. We anticipate some great interaction there, and we hope to bring that to you live over the course of the next hour. For now, though, let's get back to the game. Dave... I'll send it back to you. All right, Sebastian, great stuff. Uh, good to see uh, him out there on the runway, on the tarmac, ready for the Pirates, and then the Cubs will uh, follow. A lot just, of action at the airport. And then you're going to the airport once we're finished with this game, correct? Yes, yes. That will be bigger than J-Lo and A-Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Rossi's here. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, the Cubbies are coming in soon. We'll get to go and see some of my old teammates and buddies, talk to Joe Madden a little bit. He's got to be excited. He's from a town really close to here in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, where he grew up, does a lot of charity work. So he's fired up. I've talked to him in spring training about this event. He's pumped to see it be a local boy close by. I mean, he's really proud of where he's from. He goes back and spends a lot of time in his hometown. So just one of the many stories of today with the two big league teams coming here they land they get on the bus with the little leaguers they drive here they get out and then the real fun starts the craziness starts this place gets nuts curly martha who's been so impressive as a shortstop is on the mound he throws a first pitch breaking ball to start his outing on the mound 12 years old one of the most talented kids that the coaches in curacao have ever had oh. Uh, Profar goes out to play short, so the pitchers and the shortstop just trade places. I guess that's why we usually get a lot of pitchers fielding their position. They usually come from shortstop or somewhere in the infield. I think you're right. Si Yong Lee is the hitter. Shows a bunt. Wow. I mean, that's got to be a strike. I mean, you can see that it really impacts the kid on the mound. He's throwing right in there, called a ball. That one comes high and tight for ball four. Oh, oh you know, man. But the, the big leaguers will also visit the, the little leaguers up in 
the Grove, as we call it, where they, they live and play and eat and stay <laughs> while they're here. Is that you? That's me. I got dominated in some some PS4. I thought I recognized the back of your yeah, head. Yeah, that bald spot up there. I get a little thin up top. That's what I try to cover it with the, with the glasses. Uh. But, man, the Grove up there, that's an amazing place. I mean, the cafeteria is at the bottom, and you can go over to the Grove, play video games, ping pong. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. I bet Javi Baez will, will, will have a field day up there trying to compete with some of those kids. I bet you're right. Pinch hitter, and uh, it is Chris Bryant. I mean, he's a he may get up there. We'll see. There's there's the, the big stars will, will will have some fun up there, interacting with those kids. There's a lot of young guys on that team. Addison Russell, Kyle Schwarber. That one in the dirt. So Curly Martha who's got such an accurate throwing arm from shortstop has come in on the mound and is having a hard time initially throwing strikes. We saw that 2-0 breaking ball. I was wondering about his fastball command. It looks like he's got a little more comfort in that, that breaking ball. Yeah, it could be. And he tried another one there and missed with that. So it's 3-0. Well, this will be a problem for Curacao. They, they, they've made a pitching change, maybe partially to try to keep Jurdrick Profar eligible to pitch as soon as possible. And that's in there. Jurdrick would be able to pitch on Tuesday as of uh, right now because of uh, the, the point at which they took him out of the game. I'm sure there was some strategy there. And they still have the catcher, Shindrome Martinez, is available, who threw the no-hitter two days ago. Only threw 37 pitches. Did he offer that? Yes, he did. So that was a strike, not ball four on appeal. And I, the, the uh, to me, the runner should have to come back, but they're going to allow that runner, I guess, to stay at second base. I agree with you. When you, when you ask for that appeal, and then the runner just breaks for second, there's something that's not quite right about that. Got him swinging. So that's out number one. First strikeout for Curly Martha on the mound. Runner in scoring position, imperative for Curacao, the way that the South Korean pitchers are throwing the ball today to keep this as close as possible. We've seen some good pitching today, and runs are at a premium, as I think we knew before the game started. One mistake so far has put up the lone run for South Korea. Juno Yu, 12 years old, a pinch hitter. High hop to second, a thought at first of going to third, but I think Zion Pardo made the right play. Well, that's when you know these the baseball IQ of these kids, they're thinking lead base all the time. Even a man at second with one out, you want to just get the out 99% of the time. But Zion here looks at him, just takes the easy out, smart play. That's also where that rule where the runner can't break off the base until the pitch is passing the hitter. And if a ball's hit real hard right at a defender, maybe you have a little better chance in some cases of trying to cut down the lead runner. Yeah, it's a tough throw, especially across the diamond, the angle he had. I think he picked that up pretty fast, moved his feet, set, and threw to first base. Yeonjin Lim is the hitter. That's a strike on the outside. It's one and one. Curly Martha seems to have found his groove. Now throwing strikes. Just needs somebody to swing. I talk to pitchers all the time. When they can't find it, they just want somebody to swing the bat. Let them feel good on the mound. That one is lined and caught at third. What a great play. DeShandro Trump saves a run, and who knows, maybe more. <laughs> the ball was behind him. I don't know how he got his glove up this late. Checks the runner there. It just gets up to Shandro. Showing us the hops there with the great play. Well, as we speak over at the uh, Williamsport Airport, kids on the buses waiting for the big leaguers to arrive. They got the cameras out. <laughs> They're ready to take some pictures. Who knows what will happen on the bus ride from the airport here to our Little League complex. But those kids will be riding with some Pittsburgh Pirates momentarily. For the rest of the day, a packed schedule on the Little League side. Three more games to go. 
at 11 Eastern on ESPN, 1 Eastern right here on ESPN, and then on ABC 2 Eastern, the final Little League game of the day, all leading up to the Little League Classic Cubs-Pirates 7 Eastern Sunday Night Baseball right here on ESPN. First pitch swing to Shandro Trump, who just made a great defensive play. Grounds out for out number one. Here in the fifth inning, South Korea clinging to that one nothing lead. They clearly two of the better teams here in Williamsport going head-to-head -head in the winner's bracket second game for both of these two teams. We talked about pitching and defense being the staple so far here at Williamsport, and that's been true here today. If you're not going to play good D, probably not going to have a lot of success. There's great pitching, and the one mistake we've seen has really been the difference in this game. Well, we've already seen terrific pitching. Uh, Shendrian Martinez pitched a no-hitter on just 37 pitches against Australia. Virginia, a combined no-hitter, so we've already had two of those. A bunt by the pinch hitter, Ferenz Wooter. But he bunted it foul. Uh, Curacao's got, what, one, two, three players? They have to get at bats here with the mandatory play rules, so I think the next three hitters are all going to be pinch hitters for Curacao. Looks like we're going to get to the back, back to the top of that Curacao lineup at some point. Yeah, whether it's this inning or next, the top two hitters, the two most powerful hitters for Curacao are guaranteed to hit one more time in this game. And uh, you know that their manager wants to use the pinch hitters before those yes. two spots. He does not want to have to pinch it for either of those two. That's a swing and a miss for strike three. That's that breaking ball we've seen from Jin Wan Na. Just really, really serious depth from the left side. The Little League Grow the Game grant initiative is distributed over $4 million to local Little League programs, providing funding, facility repairs, and improvement to expand or establish softball challenger division and urban initiative programs. For more info, visit littleleague.org slash grow the game. You know another way they grow the game? By bringing the big leaguers here to Williamsport. That's right. Go ahead. Franjay Confessor is the pinch hitter. I just think. These big leaders that haven't been here. Some of the Pirates guys have been here if they've played there for a little bit, but the guys that haven't been here are in for a treat when they land here in Williamsport to see this amazing place. I, I still go back to the first time I walked down this hill and saw these fields. It, it, it's breathtaking. And I know you've been trying to tell a lot of your old buddies with the Cubs, get them ready for this experience. That's called a strike, and Fran Jay cannot believe it. He's going to pose for a minute. <laughs> Consider that <laughs> that was about this. strike one. Two and one. And that's a ball. Okay, so maybe we're even. Three and one. Jin Wan Na. Right there on the inside, three and two. Full count with two down and nobody on. one nothing South Korea in the fifth inning. That is strike three called. So six up, six down, retired by Jin Won Na. The Little Eaguers cannot wait. The Pirates are almost here. The Cubs are getting ready to show up here in Williamsport. Well, the Pirates are on their way here to Williamsport, part of the uh, Little League Classic, and some of those Pirates shared some photos from Little League. Joe Musgrove, Kevin Newman, Adam Frazier. Adam kind of looks the same. Josh Bell is a little bigger now. <laughs> <laughs> Much bigger. Great player having a great year, Josh Bell. W one of the things that I'm looking forward to is seeing the kids see Josh Bell in person. He is one big dude. Is, do we have touchdown time? I think the Pirates are here. That's probably not just a little regional jet coming in no. to the Williamsport Airport. <laughs> uh, so the Pirates are here. Can you imagine what it's like to be those little leaguers sitting on the buses right now getting ready to have Josh Bell sit down next to you? You could tell how giddy they were. They had their phones out, the apps. They're all, it's going to be snapping all their friends, posting it. On whatever they post it on, I think it's going to be really cool. Junso Park hits one, and Curly Martha knocks it down from his knees. 
throws a strike to first. Nice play when you're a great shortstop. I guess that helps. That helps a lot. The eye hand here. Watch, watch how he just throws this ball. He's ready and just knocks it down. This late glove action back against his body. Great body control that he has. Gets down there with it. And he's used to that. Just pitch and catch there to first base. Nice, easy throw. Makes that look a lot easier than it really is. Well, now you got to deal with the top of the order in Jinwon Na, who is such an impressive hitter. He has singled, been hit by a pitch, scored the only run of the game. He's also now the pitcher for South Korea. And he's retired all six hitters that he's faced. Curacao still does not have a hit in this game. South Korea has two hits, and the game's only run. Tight, tense, all the way through here. 2-0. Oh. Better be careful here. That breaking yeah. ball, I just see that right-handed breaking ball running into this bat for a homer. If it's for a strike, this is a guy you can't let beat you in this tight game. Jimon Na already has a home oh. run in this Little League World Series, and he takes ball three. I think they're thinking the same thing. Shindro Martinez behind the plate set up way outside. Just <laughs> let's not, let's not. Let's not mess with a great player. And I think Jim Wan is a little frustrated by that. Oh. He takes ball four. He looked, he looked like, really? I'm sure he gets that a lot. He probably didn't think he was going to get it at the Little League World Series, but I, I bet don't, he gets that a lot. I don't blame Curacao. No. Because that's the guy you circle and say he can hit one over the fence. Maybe there's a couple others, but nah. And now they're going to make a pitching change in Curacao. I think some more strategy here. Ball the side. Ball the side. So Curly Martha would be available to pitch tomorrow, and that is uh, the reason for the strategy here. So they need two more outs in the bottom of the fifth, trailing South Korea 1-0 while they make a pitching change. We'll step aside and be right back. Big crowds are already here, and we have had a heck of a game. It doesn't feel like Curacao hasn't had a hit. That's how good South Korea's pitching has been, though. A near Curacao home run that just went foul. Otherwise, we'd have a tie game. It is 1-0 South Korea trying to add to their lead in the bottom of the fifth. And with some of the uh, pitch count rules, Curacao making another pitching change. to Sandro Trump on the mound, the third pitcher of the game. And he bounces one of the dirt that gets to the backstop. So that will allow Na, who drew the walk, to move into scoring position. That's big. Really big there. First pitch, the toughest one to block when you're behind the plates, that fa spike fastball. Jandro, who kind of hurt himself a little bit, making a diving effort early in the game, stayed in the game, and has made a great defensive play since then. Make sure the gear's okay for uh, the catcher, Martinez. Good swing. Yeah, Bean Hewn can hit too. I mean, Jim Wan Na, he may be the, the top home run threat and maybe the best overall hitter for South Korea, but this guy can swing it too. Breaking ball just off the inside. Two and one. If he wins the lottery, he tells us he would build a water park. Ooh. <laughs> that one blooped in a diving effort, but no catch in center field. Now we get to see the arm. The tag, not in time. Daring base running to challenge the arm of the great shortstop, Curly Martha. And he threw a seed to home plate, but just a little bit late. It's 2-0 South Korea. What an effort by I Zion and center. Great break on this ball coming in on this check swing, low liner and just out of his reach, knocks it down and there's the big arm from Curly Martha. Throws a strike to home plate and just sliding in there safe, a little bit late. What a cannon. Nice slide, Get point that front toe for Jin Wan Na. So 2-0, that is huge. And a breaking ball called a strike to Meanwood Park. And it took a whole lot of stuff there. Bean Hewn's ability to get the bat on the ball, the speed and the daring of Jinwon Na. 
but with the big hitters coming up in the sixth inning, the final inning for Curacao, that extra run feels big. Really big. I just was think, about to say that. I think it almost feels out of reach with the pitching they've gotten so far from Na since he's coming in. Curacao doesn't even have a hit yet in this game. And you know what? The other point I think to make is you know, Jim Juan Na, so respected as a hitter, you, you, that wasn't an intentional walk, but basically yeah. they pitched around him, and that walk turns into a run. They say don't put him on base, right? I mean, that's the major league yep. thing. Don't, don't put him on. Make him earn it. Just missing. Two and two. So now he will get focused to get back on the mound, I assume. I, I would think he's going to stay in the game and pitch. He is a ball player. Ooh, that one hits him. So a little breaking ball. Park gets hit for the second time today. He may, be, getting, he may be feeling a little picked on. He is getting worn out. Second time. Yeah, good sportsmanship from DeShandro Trump. There's not a little league kid who wants to hit a batter no. on the mound. Not no. one kid wants to hit anybody. A lot of them, it, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of them, it rattles yeah. the pitcher. You know, I've seen that happen a lot. I wish we'd have got to talk more about being hewn water park. He wants to buy. I'm all in on the water park guy. That is. My kind of that's my speed. He might be out there at second base dreaming about what kind of water slides he would design. And he's going to break for third. No, <laughs> he's seen Chendran Martinez throw, and he's decided that he didn't want to test that arm. I think going into this, we knew that the South Korean team liked to push the envelope on the bases, but the arms around this Curacao team on the field, they've got, I mean, they have put the brakes on this aggressive base running team of South Korea. Good point. 2-0. and oh. I guess that went a little bit high. 3-0. and oh. Well, DeShandro Trump trying to figure out a way to get these last two outs in the fifth inning and keep this a close game. South Korea now, I think, is thinking about the possibility of a big inning. Oh. That's ball four. So the bases are loaded. You get a sense from the South Korean group that they're just relentless. They don't give in. They continue to be fundamentally sound, have the good at bat, put pressure on the defense. You see it paying off here late in this game. Bravo, they send them. They send them. Uh, send them bravo, bravo, they send them. Hey, that's that. Meaning. Well, I think uh, Michelangelo Celestina knows that his chances of winning this game hang in the balance right here, right now. So he's going to bring his center fielder, Isaiah Mojin, in to pitch and try to get these final two outs with the bases loaded. We've seen Jerdrick catch game one, caught a no-hitter. We've seen him pitch short third, and now he's going to center. This kid is... Got it all. Well-rounded baseball skills. Yeah, it's it's pretty good skill for a coach to be able to have a player like that. All right, they, they open the door to the bus. They're not allowed to run, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They're like fast walking. They're trying not to break all the rules. But they are so excited. The Pirates have touched down. The Cubs are uh, on their way to Williamsport, but the Pirates are here. Rapido, 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 rapido. Rapido. It's, it's almost cool when you're a kid just to walk on an airport tarmac. Right. Good yeah. point. Probably a Good lot of point. those kids have never done that. Walk up right next to the airplane. They're going to form the tunnel and get ready as the pirates get off the airplane. What a cool scene. That is great. We got more buses queuing up. So, so probably some of the buses for some support staff, some coaches, and the players will pile in with the Little Leaguers yeah. after they get off the plane. Team buses on the right there pulling in. Looks like they will hold all the staff. And then we've got our Little League World Series buses all decked out for the Classic, wrapped in all the cool logos. Going to get the players 
got to make sure the buses don't collide with your private jet. That's great. Right, yeah, it's next door. Yeah, yeah, don't don't hit that one. Don't don't hit that tail number. Don't give it out. I don't think that's mine. I think that's another colleague of ours. <laughs> so, so bases loaded, one out, and a first pitch ball from Isaiah Mojin, who is trying to help Curacao get through this big time jam. Special pinch runner at first is Min. See Yong Lee is the hitter. And he grounds one to third. They're going to come home and get the out there. Can they get the double play? No! The throw hits the runner. And that's going to allow another run to score. That one hurt. Dashing for the plate. That throw is late. Two more runs score. So South Korea has opened the game up. An attempt to make a great play turns into a big play for South Korea. 4 nothing is the lead. You're right. I mean, as fundamentally sound as this game's been, just a little small mistake here. Great play to Chandra Trump. Chandrick Martinez doesn't clear that base runner with the foot coming off the home plate, and it just hits him right in the back, and then everybody rounds the bases. Right in the small of the back. With what was a fastball from yeah. one of the hardest throwing kids here in Williamsport. There's a strike, and so that hurts for Curacao because if you, you understand the sentiment, it's already 2 nothing. You want to get that double play, get back in the dugout, but now a tall mountain to climb in the sixth inning. Right to Trump, his throw to third, to a first from third, right on the money. So here come the Pirates. Clint Hurdle's club is off the airplane, and here comes Curacao when we come back. Their last chance in the top of the sixth. All right, now the day gets really exciting. The Pirates are here. It's the day of the 2019 Little League Classic. The Pirates and the Cubs are going to play tonight here in Williamsport, but a huge part of the day is the big leaguers get to come here to the Little League Complex and visit with the kids, and they're visiting with the kids right off the airplane. There are a lot of them that are lined up to meet and greet and get autographs and take pictures. They're going to ride the buses with the Pirates as they come here to the Little League Complex. We are finishing the first of four Little League games today. They're already trading out hats. I bet those unis will come off at some point. I would imagine so. How about the pinch hitter, Paceon Rivieri, with a leadoff pinch hit single. That's the first hit of the game for Curacao. And with their big hitters coming up, maybe, maybe Curacao's got a chance in this one. Jin Wan Na has been so good on the mound. But you get the right guys coming up to build a rally. You do. Getting that first guy on is key. Leadoff guy on, always important. Those extra runs that South Korea added on may loom large. That was a great swing by a little guy, Pacey on uh, Rivieri, who gets the first hit of the game. Now we're, I think, maybe a, well, no, we just had a bat in the on-deck circle. That's all. Curacao fans on their feet now. They've been waiting to cheer all day. Trying to get behind these boys. I think that's Cole Tucker, young shortstop for the Pirates. Big cut by Jurdrick Profar. And that one hurts. Got a piece of Bean Yun, the catcher, a big piece. I think that may have hurt the thigh. That hurts. You know that feeling better than I do. I was just about to say, that is a bad one. That is, that's that's going to be a, leave a big bruise right off the bat here. The foul tip, oh Ooh, right, solid, straight down, inside of the thigh leaves the biggest bruise. That is a tough one. Yeah, he needs a minute. He's one of their very best players. Through the pants, you think that's going to work? <laughs> I mean, I can understand why he didn't want to. <laughs> I don't know about that one. <laughs> oh, boy. Starling Marte. Yeah. He's going to be popular with the Little Leaguers for sure. Melky Cabrera. Francisco. He's, this is, Scott, this is so great. Coaches. Uh, 
They all are, I'm sure, just thrilled. I mean, that's what we hear from the big leaguers over and over again about how exciting and fun it is for them to be here and see the little leaguers. Bean Hewn staying in the game. And Profar with a big swing of the end. And, and give him credit. He was ready to block the ball right away. Yeah, I got it. It's tough when the ball gets you a little gun shy a little bit, but he was ready to go. The spray worked. <laughs> I don't know about that. That one in the dirt, another good wow. save. He's got such quick feet. He slides on those knees nicely, gets his body around. That is textbook blocking right there. So Jerdrick Profar trying to build a rally for Curacao. They need four to keep the game going. He hits one hard, backhanded a fair ball. They'll get the out at second, and that's the only out they'll get, but a terrific play by Seung Lee. That's a tough play right down the line over the bag. Just fair. Great play by Lee. Going to second base, knowing nice strong throw. Being aware of where the base runners are. He knows he's got time to go to first. Sets his feet. Throws a strike to second base. Great play. You got a four-run lead. Make sure you at least get one. Playing no doubles on the line. And now you got the best hitter who can't beat you with one swing. He skies one, a pop-up on the infield, and it's caught for out number two. So South Korea deserves a lot of credit. We have seen how well Curly Martha swings the bat. And they have held him without a hit in this game. Curacao's down to their final out. And it's the catcher, Martinez, who just missed a home run that would have tied the game last time he was up and ended up striking out. Hit one deep down the left field line that hooked foul. The two catchers, how good have the two catchers in this game been? Been phenomenal. I've been really impressed with the catching and the pitching in tonight's, or today's, this morning's game. Whatever time it is. <laughs> yeah. So the players are now getting on the bus with the uh, Little Leaguers. And let's see who's brave enough to sidle up to Chris Archer. Yeah. Is that Josh Bell sitting next to Chris? I think so. I would take that seat in between the two of them. That would be a good seat. First seat I'm grabbing. Like that's I'm, I'm going right between the two studs. Two guys with big personalities. Two and two. Well, Curacao's down to their final strike. Their tournament championship hopes are not done, even if they lose this game. It's a huge advantage if you start off with two wins but Curacao's a good team they still can win this Little League World Series got him swinging and that's the ball game was that impressive or what that was a great well played game gonna be thinking about Clay Winkler hopefully he's all right and you're right Dave this Curacao team is a very talented group they will fight their way back we're gonna see them again so the last 11 Little League World Series champions started their tournament with two straight wins, 16 of the last 17. It's not easy if you don't go 2-0. It's not impossible. Uh, Curacao still has championship hopes, but they just played a really well-rounded team from South Korea. Some years, South Korea brings a team here that's all about power, just big, strong kids who hit the ball over the wall. This team seems to me to be even more balanced than we usually see. And a relentless approach. They play the small ball. They're known for their base running and defense. Great pitching today, only allowing one hit from a very talented Curacao team. This is a really good South Korean team who's not going to beat themselves. Plays the game the right way, plays hard, and continues to put pressure on the defense. So Jurdrick Profar, Curly Martha, and company still have uh, their title hopes intact. But they fall by the final score of 4 to nothing. Jinwon Na and South Korea. Bow to their fans, their family, big smiles from everybody.